Hi everybody, I'm Travis Hijak. I'm one of the librarians here at Queens. Today I'm gonna to talk about using PsycInfo, one of our databases that we subscribe to, to do research for psychology. Uh, so you always wanna start off at the library website, library.queens.edu. And then something that I wanna highlight before going straight to the database is our research guides. So we have these for our different subjects and often for specific classes. So for psychology, if we scroll down, we can see that we've got an overall one for psychology. We also have one for information literacy and psychology. Uh, and that links some of the top databases and places to find information in these fields. Uh, so I can go to PsycInfo from here. I'm also gonna show you how to get to it just from the library homepage. If you go to specialized databases here, and you can search by subject, you can filter like that, or if you know the database title, you can search for it here, Psych Info. So if you've watched the video on using the library website, uh, this database works very similarly. Uh, you have a search bar here, and the way searches work is different from Google and other search engines, which do a lot behind the scenes to try to figure out what you're looking for. They look at your location and your search history to try to predict um, the information that you need. These are way dumber. They <laughs> work in a much more straightforward way where the words that you put in are the only, or basically the only factors in the results that you get. So if I do the same search that I did earlier in the, uh, on the library website, I'm going to get way fewer results than I got before because these are specifically coming from psychology publications, those peer-reviewed scholarly journals that we looked at on the, uh, from the library website. So if I run this search the same way I started before, I already get fewer results, only 351. Uh, I can see that the first one seems pretty relevant, but I can do those same uh, search operators that I did before, like using quotes to search for exact phrases. And this is going to give me a little bit fewer results. And I can also add in that uh, nested logic where I used a uh, used parentheses to fill, um, to get more refined results. So again, I'm gonna go back to that uh, social media use during the pandemic example, and we're gonna put that in just like we did before. Close those parentheses. And again, we're gonna get a handful of much more relevant results. Uh, and I can do the same thing with the advanced search where I choose what field I want these to show up in. So I'm gonna choose the title because I want articles that are really focused on each of these things. And so I've got 13 results uh, that are all very relevant. And I can, again, go through these titles to find ones that uh, are most interesting. I can also see if there are additional search terms in these titles uh, that might be useful for me to add to my search or to use in, in, in place of one of the terms that I've already used. And so I'm going to look at this first one here. And so we can see we have those same options to save it, uh, either to the cloud, we can email it to ourselves. Um, we can use a, uh, save a permalink. So this link will still enable you to access uh, the article even after you sign out and then come back in. Uh, if you copy and paste this uh, web address, like when you you know close your computer and come back to it, it's not going to work because it's tied to the session that you're in currently, but that permalink will work. Um, and then you can also generate a citation from here. Um, it'll ask you what format you wanna use. Typically it's APA for psychology research. Uh, always make sure that the uh, citation is formatted correctly. Usually with journal articles coming from these databases, it's pretty solid, uh, but you still want to double check because um, you're the one getting the grade, not the, uh, <laughs> not the database. Uh, 
And so this one, again, we see the abstract first. You always want to read that to make sure that the article is relevant before you dive into the whole thing. Um, it also gives you much more specific information, like the population that it's studying. So this one is specifically adults and young adults. Uh, so it's not looking at children. And it also shows you uh, subjects. So these can be really useful for figuring out additional ways to search for your topic. So if mental health is too broad of a topic, you can look at depression, you know, a specific disorder or anxiety or something. Uh, so be sure to check these out um, to give yourself more ideas for how to search. If you click these links, then it will automatically run a search. Um, so we could have this be one of our terms and then build a search going back to the terms that we used before. And now I don't have to do mental health um, because I'm specifically focused on depression, um, but I can bring back in the pandemic um, or COVID or social distancing that I used before. And I'm gonna add these to the title again. So now we're just gonna get results that are about social media use during the pandemic um, and how it uh, relates to depression specifically. So now we've got one really relevant result. Uh, so you'll have to play with that as you go uh, to, to find more articles. Um, and we can talk more in class. You can also uh, always come visit me in the library or send me an email uh, to um, give more information about um, how to run these types of searches. So that's all we're going to look at today. Um, thank you for joining. Bye.